So one by one, we are going to see some of the very important laws of integral exponents. So the first law states that if A is any real number and M and N are positive integers, then A to the power of M into A to the power of N is equal to A to the power of M plus N. So if we have any two numbers such that it is A to the power of M and A to the power of N and if they are being multiplied then the final result is a to the power of m plus n. So we can write this as equal to a to the power of m plus n. Let's see an example. 5 square into 5 to the power of 5. So if we have to multiply 5 square into 5 to the power of 5, this could be written as equal to 5 to the power of 2 plus 5, which is equal to 5 to the power of 7. So 5 square into 5 to the power of 5 is nothing but equal to 5 to the power of 7. We simply add these indices, indices or exponents. So we can say that if we have to multiply a to the power of m with a to the power of n, then their product is nothing but equal to a to the power of m plus n. We simply add the exponents. The second law says that if a is a non-zero real number and m and n are positive integers, then a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So here simply if we have to divide a to the power of m by a to the power of n this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. In the case of multiplication the exponents were being added. Now in the case of division the exponents are subtracted. So a to the power of m by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So for example 3 cube when divided by 3 square is equal to 3 to the power of 3 minus 2 and this is equal to 3 to the power of 1 which is equal to 3. Thus if we have to divide 3 cube by 3 square we can simply write it as 3 to the power of 3 minus 2. We subtract both these exponents to get the final value as equal to 3. Thus if we have to divide two numbers 8 to the power of m and 8 to the power of n then this is equal to 8 to the power of m minus n. Let's see the third law of exponents. If A is any real number and M and N are positive integers, then A to the power of M whole to the power of N is equal to A to the power of M into N, which is equal to A to the power of N whole to the power of M. So if we have A as any real number and M and N are positive integers, then A to the power of M whole to the power of N is equal to A to the power of M into N. We simply multiply both these exponents and this could also be written as a to the power of n to the power of m. For example, if we have the number 2 cube to the power of 4, now this could be written as 2 to the power of 3 into 4 which is equal to 2 to the power of 12. Now this could also be written as 2 to the power of 4 whole cube. Thus we have used this property and we get the final result as 2 to the power of 12. Similarly, if we take the case as 5 squared to the power of 3, then this is equal to 5 to the power of 2 into 3. We simply multiply both these exponents and this is equal to 5 to the power of 6. Now again this could be written as equal to 5 cube whole square. So we take the square of 5 cube. Thus, a to the power of m whole to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m into n which is also equal to a to the power of n whole to the power of m. The fourth law says that if a and b are real numbers and m and n are positive integers then a b to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n into b to the power of n. So this is one of the very important result. If we have any two numbers a b and we have to take the exponent as n to the product of this two numbers a b then they could be individually written as a to the power of n into b to the power of n. Similarly, if we have a by b whole to the power of n, then this could be written as a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. So the fourth law of exponent says that if a and b are real numbers and m and n are positive integers, then a b to the power of n could be written as a to the power of n into b to the power of n. And similarly, if we have a by b to the power of n, then this could be written as a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. 
So let's try to solve an example based on the above concept. Evaluate each of the following. First, a part is 3 to the power of 45 into 3 to the power of 55 minus 3 to the power of 23 into 3 to the power of 77. And b part is 1 by 2 to the power of 4 into minus 3 by 4 to the power of 2 into 16 by 27 whole square. So we have to evaluate the value of these two parts a and b. Now, let's look at the first part which is 3 to the power of 45 into 3 to the power of 55 minus 3 to the power of 23 into 3 to the power of 77. So now, now they can be clubbed as one part and they can be clubbed as one part. So 3 to the power of 45 into 3 to the power of 55 minus 3 to the power of 23 into 3 to the power of 77. Now we know that a to the power of m into a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. We simply add the exponents. So this would be equal to 3 to the power of 45 plus 55 and this would be equal to 3 to the power of 23 plus 77. Now 45 plus 55 is 100 and also 23 plus 77 is equal to 100. So this equals to 3 to the power of 100 minus 3 to the power of 100. And thus the final answer is equal to 0. Let's solve the second part. The second part is 1 by 2 to the power of 4 into minus 3 by 4 to the power of 2 into 16 by 27 to the power of 2. Now this could be further written as 1 into minus 3 square into 16 square divided by 2 to the power of 4 into 4 square into 27 square. Here we have used one of the properties of the exponent and written this expression as this way. Now this is equal to 1 into 3 square into this could be written as 4 square whole square divided by 2 to the power of 4 into 4 square into 3 cube whole square. Now this is 4 square to the power of 2 and this is 4 square. From this we get answer as 4 square which is equal to 16. And from here what we get is 3 to the power of 4. Now this could be further reduced to 1 into 16 divided by 2 to the power of 4 into 3 to the power of 4. Now also 2 to the power of 4 is nothing but equal to 16. So 16 and 16 gets cancelled and what we get is 1 by 3 to the power of 4. Now 3 to the power of 4 is nothing but equal to 81 and thus the final answer would be 1 by 81. So the final value of this expression is 1 by 81. So simply using the laws of exponents we can find the answer to this problem. Now earlier we have seen the laws of integral exponents. Now it's time for us to see the laws of rational exponents. So the first is a to the power of m into a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So this is the same as the integral one. a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. This is also the same as the integral exponents. The third is a to the power of m whole to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m into n. This is also the same as the integral one. The next is a to the power of minus n is equal to 1 by a to the power of n. So whenever we have minus n, we write it as 1 by a to the power of n. And this is also the same as the integral one. The next is a to the power of m by n is equal to a to the power of m whole to the power of 1 by n. Now this is equal to a to the power of 1 by n whole to the power of m. We can actually interchange the powers. This we know. That is, we can write a to the power of m by n equal to the nth root of a to the power of m. So this is actually called as the nth root and this could be further written as the nth root of a to the power of m. Now, m by n could be written as m into 1 by n. We can write this as a to the power of m whole to the power of 1 by n. And again, these two powers can be interchanged. Now, a to the power of m by n is nothing but equal to the nth root of a to the power of n. And this could be written as the nth root of a to the power of m. The sixth is a b to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m into b to the power of m. So this is also the same as the integral exponents. And the seventh is a by b to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m divided by b to the power of m. Now this is also the same as integral exponents. Now the important point here is a and b are positive real numbers and m and n are rational numbers. That's why we are looking at the laws of rational exponents. Your a and b are positive real numbers. We have taken them to be positive real numbers and the exponents m and n are rational numbers. So these are some of the laws of rational exponents which are almost similar to the laws of 
integral exponents. So it's time for us to solve a few examples based on rational exponents. Simplify the fifth root of 243 to the power of minus 3 and the part B is we have to simplify the expression third root of the fourth root of x to the power of 5. So the first is the fifth root of 243 to the power of minus 3. Now this could be written as 243 to the power of minus 3 by 5. This is the law of rational exponents. That is, if we have a fifth root, so we can write this power as 1 by 5. And thus, this could be further written as 243 to the power of minus 3 by 5. Now, 243 could be written as equal to 3 to the power of 5. So this expression becomes 3 to the power of 5 whole to the power of minus 3 by 5. Now, these two could be multiplied together. And thus, 5 and 5 gets cancelled. And what we get is 3 to the power of minus 3. Now, 3 to the power of minus 3 is nothing but equal to 1 by 3 to the power of 3. And which is equal to 1 by 27. Thus, the final value of fifth root of 243 to the power of minus 3 is equal to 1 by 27. Let's look at the b part. Now, the b part is the third root of the fourth root of x to the power of 5. Now, this expression is nothing but equal to x to the power of 5 by 4. As the fourth root could be written as equal to 1 by 4. And what we get is third root of x to the power of 5 by 4. Now, again, this could be further simplified as x to the power of 5 by 4 whole to the power of 1 by 3 because the third root could be written as equal to 1 by 3. Thus, we multiply these two powers together to get the final answer as x to the power of 5 by 12. Thus, the final value of this expression is equal to x to the power of 5 by 12. Thus, using the laws of exponents, we can reduce very lengthy terms to very simplified expressions. Now, let's start to solve the last problem. And this problem says that solve for x and we have been given the equation as 7 to the power of x minus 2 into 11 to the power of 3x minus 11 equal to 539. So we have to solve this equation and find the value of x. Now how to do that? Let's look at the solution of this. We have been given the equation as 7 to the power of x minus 2 into 11 to the power of 3x minus 11 equal to 539. Now what we do is we factorize this 539 into its factors to get 49 into 11 and this 49 could be written as 7 square. Therefore, 7 to the power of x minus 2 into 11 to the power of 3x minus 11 is equal to 7 square into 11. Now what we do next is we equate the exponents because this term would generate this term and this term would generate this term. Thus, when we equate the exponents, we get x minus 2 equal to 2 and 3x minus 11 equal to 1. From this we get x equal to 4 and from this we get the value of x equal to 4 as well. So x equal to 4 is the final answer. Thus the value of x obtained from this equation is equal to 4. So using the laws of exponents we have solved this problem. So that was end of our chapter on number systems. So in a nutshell let's try to summarize all the important concepts that we have learned in this chapter. A number r is called a rational number if it can be written in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. So any number r is a rational number if it can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. The second is a number s is called an irrational number if it cannot be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. So any number which cannot be expressed in the form of p by q is known as a rational number. The third point is the decimal expansion of a rational number is either terminating or non-terminating recurring. Fourth, the decimal expansion of an irrational number is non-terminating and non-recurring. Moreover, a number whose decimal expansion is non-terminating, non-recurring is called as an irrational number. So, any number whose decimal expansion is non-terminating and non-recurring is called an irrational number. All the rational and irrational numbers make up the collection of real numbers. So if we add all the rational numbers and add all the irrational numbers, then they together constitute the set of real numbers. The sixth is, there is unique real number corresponding to every point on the number line. Also corresponding to each real number, there is a unique point on the number line. So there is always a unique real number corresponding to every point on the number line and every real number could be 
uniquely represented on the number line. The seventh is, if R is rational and S is irrational, then R plus S and R minus S are irrational numbers. Also, R into S and R by S are also irrational numbers, where R is not equal to zero. So, if R and S are two irrational numbers, then their sum, their product, their difference and their division is always an irrational number. If n is a natural number other than a perfect square, then root n is an irrational number. So this was all about the number systems and I really hope that you have enjoyed learning this chapter.